so Canis uh, uh, very warm welcome uh, to you all this is um, this is my uh, dining room uh, this week we've got uh, the oil for Wales Scarlet's Q &A. Uh, and as you know uh, today's special guest is uh, Josh McLeod so really looking forward to spending a bit of time uh, with Josh we've got a lot of uh, questions uh, lined up uh, for you Josh but um, first of all I know you're used to training probably a minimum of twice a day at the Scarlet's. How's, uh, how's lockdown suiting you at the moment? Yeah, um, no, it's all good. It's all good at the moment. Uh, we're still, still allowed out, out and about the house, really. So, uh, yeah, running and stuff hasn't been an issue. Um, obviously, we haven't got as much weights as we'd like and things like that. So, uh, the patio out of the back of my house has been sort of converted into a gym floor, like, but uh, you know we're just doing doing what we can really to get by at the moment. Uh, but so far so good. We've got an assault bike set up in the in the living room as well. So great. Have you got um seventy k dumbbells for your bench press or something? <laughs> um, I've got seventies now. I managed I managed to wean the forties, and uh, in the local gym they'd all disappeared. So clearly we've got some big uh, big bench presses down west, like. <laughs> um, right, we um, one thing I know you're probably missing is the is the is the famous Pembrokeshire Lift Club, isn't it? I've heard a rumor also that you've sort of chipped in with your buddies uh, to buy a car. Tell me, uh, tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, I, I don't really know how this has become such talk of the town. Really, it's uh, we four hundred quid, I think the car was, uh, and. It's well, we got our worst money's worst out of it, but uh, she's gone bust now, so uh, that's that's the, that's the talk. Uh, well, that's the talk, um, yeah. So, how long did that last you? How long did it last the car? <laughs> the car lasted maybe two months, maybe we had worth out of it two, three months. So, we had insurance for the five of us on there. Um, and something went wrong with the suspension and then all of a sudden it would cost more for the repairs than it did originally to buy the car so we just thought we'd uh, scrap it yeah unfortunately you wrote, you wrote it off it, it is carrying some some big guys there mind so you can understand if the suspension goes well the car the car went to Ryan Combeers over our time off for two weeks and uh, it seemed to come back broken so I'll 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 put the blame on him for this one. <laughs> uh, he's rallying around the streets of Tenby. Yeah, I, th I think it was something along them lines. Uh. <laughs> right, we've had a great uh, we've had a great response to questions again on social media. Right, so we'll uh, we'll go straight into it. Uh, Martin on Twitter wants to know the best game you've been involved with so far playing for the Scarlets. Uh, <sighs> Is that atmosphere, atmosphere type of thing, and just all round yeah. build up? Um, yeah. I'd say probably the La Rochelle game at home. Um, mm. That was for me just the build up throughout the week um, around the town, uh, all the flags, everything inside the stadium, the atmosphere was awesome. Um, yeah, no, that was probably up there, one of, one of the best. Um, obviously, the ending of that Ospreys, Ospreys one back in the back a couple of years back was pretty decent for myself. But no, from a team, it's definitely the La Rochelle game for me. Yeah, yeah, the Ospreys one was a, was a huge one. Um, one of those electrifying moments as a supporter, um, scoring that uh, last minute try. But Chris Edmonds on Facebook. Um, he has asked actually when you scored the match winning try in the corner against the Ospreys what was going through your mind when the ball was coming your way and after you finished it don't drop it don't drop it because I think I was probably I was probably the only cross field kick I caught all year including <laughs> including training ones so uh, I've got to admit it's not something I practice regularly so I think uh Scotty Wills put it on a put it on a plate, and uh, luckily I managed to catch it really. And then after I can't I can't really 
I can't really remember what I was feeling. I mean, it was just like, yeah, it was, it was pretty unreal. Pretty unreal feeling. Yeah, it was an in, uh, it was an incredible finish. Um, I I had sort of I couldn't handle that my nerves had gone, so I'd gone back to the office to watch the to watch the last few minutes on the um, on the screen. Unfortunately, so I wasn't there watching uh, watching it as it happened. But um, there's a sort of delayed reaction over the screen, so you could hear all the rumbling uh, and the noise and the cheering. And we thought, oh, there must have been a try, must have been a try. So. Um, there's about a 20 second delay that we we caught up with the try and then um, then we went then we went nuts. It was a an unbelievable um, occasion, but I thought that might be an answer that you just didn't want to drop the thing. <laughs> no, I didn't know. I I tried to stay away from that. I'll get a lot of stick for that. See, I've, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, now we did a good one. Uh, sorry, Chris on Twitter. Um, why do you think Pembrokeshire produces so many great rugby players? Uh, it's pretty normal people down west. I think pretty humble, pretty um, pretty grounded, like uh, just normal, hard-working people come out of Pembrokeshire. Um, and that's basically as long as you've got the right work ethic in rugby, like you're gonna, you're not gonna be too far off. So I think that's probably why Pembrokeshire produces. So many good players. I wouldn't put myself just, in that brand. Would you say Rob Bevs is normal and grounded person? Deep down, deep down, he is. <laughs> yeah, no, I know him. I know him better than most, and uh, he is very, very grounded um, and very grounded, very sensitive guy. So yeah, he does. Uh, he does certainly keep. Well, I, I make sure them two feet stay on the floor. Anyway. <laughs> Gosh, sensitive as well as he Gosh, I'm learning a lot about Rob Evans today. Fair play. But you're right, he is he is a top man. You're right, he's a top man. Um Sarah Davis on Twitter. Uh now an unusual one. Betsy wants to know what Josh's take on the Easter bunny is. Is he real or does mummy oh I can't say mummy, I gotta say mum, I'm a mum person. Or does mum do it all? She cannot wait to get back to Park of Scarlet and cheer you on. Hashtag help mummy out. It's <laughs> uh, a tricky one now. Is I, um, I think I'm pretty sure the Easter Bunny does it all, doesn't he? That's uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, That's well, I, 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 I'd agree with that. But my wife at the moment is currently uh, writing out uh, uh, an Easter egg hunt, um, and that's doing her head in. So she's uh, she's not in the best of moods this morning. So hopefully she can have some help from the Easter Bunny. <laughs> She's giving me the evils now, Josh. She's giving me the evils. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, Yeah, we got Ethan Williams on Twitter asking, which former Scarlet player did you look up to most when developing as a player? Um, probably <sighs> Scarlet's was tricky, really. I mean, we they they're always blessed with a good back row down in Scarlet. So even from the ages of like ten to. 16, 17, 18, you know, Scarlet's always had really good back rows there, so I could I could sit here all day and name more them, but um more on a world scale, probably the likes of Richie McCaw, people like that. Um Juan Smith, you know, people uh in a, of a similar position to me with um yeah, I'd say them too. Carter as well. I was a big fan of Carter, but I don't think I could pull off his uh his kicking ability and his skills are so I'll uh... in Rob Ebbs is in two a couple of weeks ago. That's all he went on about was playing at us at half. No, I know he likes to think he's got better hands than me, so I'll uh, I'll leave him to that one. <laughs> Owen Richards on Twitter is asking oh we actually we've had the answer actually it's the best atmosphere you've played in at Park of Scarlet, but that was obviously uh, the La Rochelle game. We'll move on move on to the next question is from Greg Jones on Twitter. Do you prefer getting a turnover in a ruck to scoring a try? Uh, I think that depends what, what you know, that Osprey's, again, like, you take that any day, but it's my job, really. I don't score many tries, so I'll probably have to say a turnover in a ruck. Right? <laughs> um, I suppose it's 
you're the turnover king at the moment this season with the Scarlets, and you saw it's such a, a fundamental part of the game and such an important part of the game, isn't it? It's as, it's as important as finishing off those moves, isn't it? Yeah, you do your best to help the team out in any way that you can, and obviously that's the job that I've got. Um, yeah, you just try and do it as best you can and stick your head where it hurts and hope for the best. Hope the ref doesn't penalise you. Yeah, have you? Um, is that something you try and work at? Is having a good relationship with the ref? Is it important? Yeah, I got off to a pretty ropey start this season. Actually, I was giving away sort of three a game, um, so it was something that I worked on um, from the start of the season. And uh, yeah, we were getting places before, obviously, all this virus. We were getting getting places. We were building relationships with refs um, and things like that. That is definitely a massive, massive thing, though, as a, as a seven. I mean, if you don't get along with a ref and you're in your head's in twenty rucks and he's making twenty decisions on your game, then uh, more are going to go against you if he doesn't like you than than four. You know, so yeah, and that's what you from watching Richie McCaw. He had a as captain, I guess it was easier, but he had a great relationship with the refs because he, he could be pinged off the field occasionally, couldn't he? But they they manage, you know, they wouldn't send him, they wouldn't give him a yellow or, or anything. They'd still look on the look on the good side of the decisions. No, yeah, I think he was he was quite lucky that he was captain at times. Yeah, Tom on uh, Instagram. Um now we did mention I was at half, but if uh, if you could be one other position, where would you play? That'd be tough that. It would probably be, probably be on a wing. Be happy mm -hmm. on a wing. Yeah, the wing or inside centre. I might take inside centre. Couple of crash balls. Yeah, you'd keep your good looks on the wing. Yeah, uh, you'd keep your good looks on the wing. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure. I guess too many split eyes over there, and I'll be finishing off more tries than I do these days anyway. So, yeah, added bonus. You mentioned sort of self-reflection as well and treating refs differently. Uh, Luke on Twitter uh, is asking, if you had to give yourself a word of advice, knowing what you know now, what would you tell yourself? A couple of, the Josh McLeod from a couple of years ago, maybe. Uh, I'd probably tell myself to set an alarm on away trips when we're going on the flights. <laughs> because, uh, yeah... I've been late to the bus a couple of times on away trips and that's, that's done me over in the past. So I think I'll leave that there. That must have hurt you in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, so I think it was, it was more the banter that I got because of it. And, uh, but no, it's certainly, uh, certainly not, not a night to remember. Yeah, I, I did it. I did it once as a, when I was team manager. Um, that was horrific when I got onto late onto the bus late as a team manager. It was the worst experience of my team manager days. Without without a shadow of the doubt, because you, you just you, there's no hiding places. You just got to apologise, um, carry on. But oh, I had, I had some thick, and they, some players now still don't let me forget it. No, I'm not surprised. No, no, it's always mentioned. It's always brought up on away trips in, amongst the boys. I like, so. But we all all been there, done that, live and learn, isn't it? Yeah, live and learn, live and learn. Uh, LA Architects on Instagram are asking, when you were a young lad playing for Pembroke, was it in your mind to play for the Scarlets or perhaps uh, an opportunity with Wales? Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it was. It was. It's always going to be in the back of your mind. Um, I always thought when I was when I was younger, if I could get uh, sort of playing regional level or even international, it'd be really good. Um, so you would tick one of one of two. Um, and we'll just see, yeah. Uh, it's definitely, definitely always been in the back of my mind as a, when I was a youngster playing in the Pembrokeshire County and things like that. So, yeah. Hmm. Um, talking of uh, Wales, uh, you did miss out on... The Six Nations squad, you have been knocking on the door quite strongly all, all season, to be fair. Um, is that still uh, an aspiration, really, to get into that 
Welsh squad. Um, I, you feel you're close. Uh, do you still need to uh, work a bit more on on certain aspects of your game? How do you feel about it? Oh no, there's always there's, uh, back row in Wales. I said it before. Is flooded with talent. So it's always going to be tricky for the young boys coming through, you know. We've, um, and then, as you say, there's always going to be things to work on as well. So um, I don't know how far I don't know how far I would be off, but uh, it's going to still be an aspiration. I'll keep pushing. It's uh, be interesting. Uh, good answer. Um, there's no doubt if you keep performing as you are. Hopefully, when the season um, returns, um, then you will have that opportunity for the. Uh, to put the put the Welsh jersey on, um, but Josh, I just want to uh, thank you for your for your time today. We had some uh, had some great answers, a good discussion. Um, whenever the season returns, and hopefully it's only a couple of months away, um, hopefully it can carry on because you were on fire. Um, thanks a lot for for today, and uh, congratulations on the season you've had. Good stuff. Thanks, Gar. Appreciate it. Good. Cheers, Josh. That's the end of uh, this week's uh, Q&A. Uh, big thank you to everyone for, for listening and we'll see you again uh, next week. Jochem Orige.